Yes. We're about um, 12 lines down in Chuftal Ahmed Aleph, Iboyelahu. 12 lines down, Iboyelahu. What's the first word on the, on the line? 9, 10, 11, 12. That was correct. Behoido. Uh, Got it. Thank you. But we're working on the last line, Iboyelahu. We're talking about, about Hanukkah still. We said we're going to say Hanukkah in benching by mm-hmm. Noide Lecha. That was the last statement that we made. Yeah. Everybody feels we're on this, in the same spot? I yes. am. Okay. Iboy Lehu. Mala Haske Rosh Chodesh Bircha Samozin. Now we just said we're going to add Hanukkah into Bircha Samozin. What about Rosh Chodesh? Should we say Rosh Chodesh in Bircha Samozin? Uh, Rosh Chodesh is not the Ravana. It's not the Rabbana. Rosh Chodesh is the Raisa. Right, to be masculine, to bring in the Chodesh. And yet, we mm. just said about Hanukkah that we added it into benching. So you should say, certainly, Rosh Chodesh uh. we added to the benching. Or maybe we say, no. Look, Rosh Chodesh, Rosh Chodesh doesn't have Prasume Nisim. It's not a public, public, public publication of a miracle. Maybe it doesn't warrant it. Let's see. Do we mention Rosh Chodesh and Birchas Hamazon or not? In Tim Saloma, if you want to say Chanukah the Rabbanon, Chanukah the Rabbanon, right? Lo Tzarech. Maybe, maybe we don't actually need to say Chanukah in in uh, benching because only the Rabbanon. Rosh Chodesh the Raisa, Rosh Chodesh the Raisa Tzarech. But you definitely have to say it. Oy Dilma, Kevin Lo Aser B'Siyus Melacha Lo Maskir. And look. One of the things you find by saying something in an extra statement in benching is it's because on that you don't do malacha, like Shabbos and Yantis. But on, but on Rosh Chodesh, you're allowed to do malacha. So maybe we don't mention it. So Rav Omar, the great rabbi, Rav said, no, Mazki will definitely say, right, we're going to definitely say Rosh Chodesh in benching. Rechina said, we don't mention it. Let's see, how do we figure out this machoikis? Do we add? I mean, you, you guys know that we, we say Yalav Yavai in benching when we have Rosh Chodesh, but how do we know it? Amar Avzika, no, Kudrav, Yadachal. Hold on to Rav's opinion, right? Who says that we say it, and I'll tell you why. Right? Because Rav Ushia says clearly the law is like Rav, that in, in on, on Rosh Chodesh we say, in benching Yalav Yavah, how do we know that? The Tani of Lushia, Yom Yishesh Ben Korban Musa. What are the distinctions? How do we figure out if we have uh, extra addition to benching? If you have Musaf on that day, for example, the Gon Rosh Chodesh, the Chalus Shalmoid, right? And Chalamoid also, Chalamoid, the intermediary days between the first days of Yantif and the last days. We also add in, if it's Sukkot, if it's Pesach, we add in the Pesach. Or Sukkot's uh, part into benching. Arvus Shachris Umincha. If it's Arvus Shachris Umincha in davening, what do we do? We saw the Yala v'Yavoi. The Spal Shmona Esrei v'Amur Me'ein Ha'Amur Ba'Avoida. Ein Ha'Amur here refers to Yala v'Yavoi. We said in Avoida. Avoida refers to Ritzay, right? Ritzay in Shmona Esrei. We add in in the middle of Ritzay. Yala v'Yavoi. V'Im Lo Amur. What if you didn't say it? On Rosh Chodesh or on Chalamoid, Machsir and Raisa, you have to repeat the Shemun Asfei. Important. They ain't mehem Kiddush al Kois. But on Rosh Chodesh and Chalamoid, there's no Kiddush. You don't make Kiddush on a cup. It's it's holy without being holy enough for Kiddush. Yesh Bechen has Karta Bichas Lamazim. In addition, on Chalamoid and Rosh Chodesh, you say the Alav Yavoi in Benching. So we see clearly the statement here, like Rav Ushia supporting Rav, that we add, we add on Rosh Chodesh, we add to benching Yalav uh, what's, uh, what's a non-priestly watch? The Ma'amadot. Yeah, we'll get there in a second. Yeah, we'll get there one second. Okay, sorry. Yomim Shein Behem Korban Musaf going Shein Bechamishi. So now we're today. We don't add. Um, it's not about Yalav Yavo, but a, a different addition. You know, we have the addition of um, Anenu, right? When on fast days, we add a, a tefillah called Anenu. Guys, did it ring a bell? In Shema mm-hmm. Kolenu, we add a bracha of Anenu. 
So we're talking about that, that edition right now. Yom Shem Hem Korban Musaf. No Korban Musaf on a fast day. Keep going. Shem Yom Chamishi V'tainis Umamodos. So the ones who ask right away, what is this? Shem Yom Chamishi. What is the second and the fifth? Umamodos. Now we know that the Umamodos were the divisions of the people in the Kohanim that used to go to the base of the Migdash. There were 24 family divisions. Many families in each division, but they had 24 times a year they would go, which worked out to twice a year, approximately. And, all uh, right, and they would um, take along Levium and Yisraelim with them, but it was too many people. So some of the people would stay home, and on the days that their Muhammad was, was doing the Avoda in the base of Migdash, they would fast. They would fast, actually, uh, four ex- consecutive days, says the Gemara. Excuse me, says the, says the commentaries. They would fast on Shani, Shlishi, uh, Shani, Shlishi, Rivi, and Hamishi, four consecutive days. Of course, not not at not at night. Right? They would fast during the day. They were day fast, not twenty four hour fast. And the Ramadan. idea was, the idea was that the kor- korbanah should be accepted. Right? It was a it was a self sacrifice that the the people, the rest of their families that were working in the base of Israel should have. Should have good fortune there. Now, the more wants to know, first of all, Sheni Chamishi, Ma'avudetai. What did you do on the on Sheni and Chamishi? What was the, what was the second and fa, on, on the second day of the week and the fifth day of the week? Ella, no, we didn't have a, a fast on the second and the fifth. What was the fast? Ella Sheni Chamishi Ubeis. That's the same as Tainus that we have called Bahab. Right, Bahab is after after Yantif, the second or third week after Yantif, the famous. Fast that many people observe called Bahab. Thursday of the one week, we skip a week, then Monday of the following week, and then we skip a week and Thursday of the fall of, of excuse me, and Thursday of the following Thursday, Monday, Thursday. And uh, and that that custom, right? So in those days, even though we add something to the prayer, we don't add anything to the benching. Uh, get right there right away. And in Arvis, in, 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 in the uh, evening prayer, in the Shachrith prayer, in the Mincha prayer, right, we add in the, uh, the Anenu. If you didn't say it, in Maschir and Oiso. You don't say it, you don't repeat it over. And Arashi um, speaks out over here, right? What do you mean you don't say it in, 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 your, in the Marv and. Um, and chakras, say it in Marv and chakras. If you ever, if you ever had a fasting, we know we only say Anenu in Mincha. We don't say Anenu in Arvis and chakras. So he points out that really it would be appropriate, but we're worried that maybe you'll eat. And the only appropriate time to say it is really in Mincha, because by Mincha it's clear that you didn't eat. You didn't eat. So if you say Anenu in chakras in Marv or chakras, and it comes out in the morning, you don't feel well, and you eat, so you ended up saying a certain blessing inappropriately because you ended up eating. So the only time we actually say it is in Mincha. Even though Gemara says you, it should be said at night and in, and in the morning, but we only say it in Mincha. Now we skip these brackets here. There's, there's four or five words in brackets. We don't say it in benching. So, so Raji is saying the night before right, when you're, when you're going you're gonna to fast the next day, you don't add anything into benching. And then there's a Rashi that I didn't get my head around what he's talking about. But but after the night afterwards, after you fasted, you don't, also don't mention that you fasted in benching. And I couldn't uh, figure out why Rashi would make that point. Who would think that the night after a fast, you might mention the fast in benching? I couldn't find anybody uh, to, to clarify this question for me, at least uh, on my, on, in the Talmud that I'm, that I'm learning. So... Uh, interesting question. Why Rashi points that out? Iboy a new question. And here we're talking about Musaf on Shabbos. Let's just think about it for a second, guys. Come to Musaf on Shabbos, and it's Hanukkah. Now Hanukkah has no Musaf offering. There's no special offering in the in, in the base of Migdash for Hanukkah, but for Shabbos there is. So do I say, look? Shabbos, I have the special Korban Musaf. And therefore, 
right? When I when I when I make when I do the tefillah of Musaf, it's an exclusive Shabbos tefillah. It's not a Hanukkah tefillah because Hanukkah doesn't have a connection to a right. Musaf offering, so I don't mention it. Or maybe no, maybe look, I have to pray four times on Shabbos, and it is Hanukkah today, so maybe. Hanukkah can squeeze in to the bracha of Mustaf just on the basis of the fact that today is Hanukkah. Maybe we squeeze it in. So the more is going to work on this pretty hard to figure out, are we allowed to say the Hanukkah blessing, which is al Hanisim, right? Are we allowed to say al Hanisim in Musaf on, on uh, Shabbos Hanukkah? Do we say, look, there's no, there's no Musaf on Hanukkah, and therefore, when it comes to Musaf on Shabbos, we don't mention Hanukkah. Should we say, no, look, it's a day of four davenings, and it is Hanukkah, and therefore, when it comes to Musaf, I should definitely have to mention Hanukkah. No, we like the first logic. The first logic makes the most sense. Right? There's no Mustaf prayer on Hanukkah. So when it comes to Mustaf, I already mentioned Mustaf in, in Shachris. I, 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 I mentioned it I mentioned it in Marv. I mentioned it in Shachris. I mentioned it in Mincha. But I'm not mentioning it in Mustaf because there's no Hanukkah connection to Mustaf. They say, you do say it. You definitely say it because it is Hanukkah. Let's see. How do we, how do we figure it out? Let's figure it out. That long list of rabbis, right, who said, what did they say? I think that you don't mention. If you have Rosh Chodesh on Shabbos. Now, we have, we have a similar situation. Now, they, they, this is a, one of these Gemara's guys, a lot of little pieces here that are confusing to us because, first of all, when you say Maftir on Shabbos, so when it comes to the, to the blessing after Maftir, do you mention Rosh Chodesh? No. You just mention Shabbos. When it's Yontif, you mention in Maftir Yontif. But when you say the Bracha after Maftir, you just mention Shabbos. Maftir, we're not Shabbos, it is Chaz Rosh Chodesh. In the blessings of Maftir, you don't say anything about Rosh Chodesh, right? Um, you know, the, uh, everybody familiar, you know, we have the long blessings that we make before Maftir and after Maftir. But those blessings change for Yantu, but they don't change for Rosh Chodesh. It wasn't for the Shabbos coming, there'd be no Rosh Chodesh Navi at all. We don't use the Navi on Rosh Chodesh. So we see clearly, right, that the Hanukkah also, Hanukkah has no, no connection to Musaf, and therefore, right, why should, why should we be adding it in, like, uh, why should we be adding it in on Musaf? More as, me dummy, a bio. Well, how can we make this comparison? It's not, it's not, it's, there's no, there's no comparison. Hasam Navi Rosh Chodesh, like the Klaal. Rosh Chodesh has no connection to Navi at all. But over here, we definitely did mention, right, the, the uh, Hanukkah in, 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 in Mar. We mentioned it in Shachos and Mincha. So there is a connection to the day. And, and, and similarly, right, with, with Rosh Chodesh. You mentioned them all already. So there is a connection. Hint of they're not connected to the day. What, what would it be more analogous to? What's it more analogous to? Do we say al Hanisim in Musaf on Shabbos? That's the question. Let's keep it the back of, in the, try to keep it in our minds. Do we say Musaf, in the Musaf prayer, do we say al Hanisim for Hanukkah? This is what it's similar to. This, is, this name is great. I love this name. Amurav Ach Badoi. Amurav Masna. Amurav. See, a long list of rabbis. Yantav shechali yoyes to Shabbos. When Yantav comes out on Shabbos, what do we do? Maftir ben Navi. We have Raftar ben Navi. Bimin chobes Shabbos. And when you have the Maftir on Shabbos. Now, this is something Rashi points out. We don't do. And it was there minig on Shabbos mincha also to have to have a Maftir, a Haftarah. 
You don't have to mention Yontif in, in that in that mincha. So to also Shumali Shabbos Einavu Mincha Abu Yontif. Again, it's similar to the point they were making earlier. If it wasn't for Shabbos, we would never have the Haftorah. Right? It wasn't for Shabbos, there wouldn't be a Haftorah. So Rosh Chodesh doesn't get mentioned in it. Right? We don't we don't mention. Excuse me, Yontif doesn't get mentioned in it because it only comes for Shabbos. Here too, also, al Nisim has nothing to do with the, with the Musaf offering, and therefore, when we come to Musaf, we don't say it; we exclude it. Over the daf, what does the Gemara say? V'leis hilchasaka kol hanish maisasa, and all the rabbis that just spoke back and forth. We don't hold like them. How do we hold? We all know that we had in, in Musaf. On Shabbos, Hanukkah, we add in all anisim. But why? Why do we add in all anisim? Because we have a different, we have a different source, a different tradition that it, it is added. Where's that from? Like Yeshua ben Levi. Where do we, where do we see it? Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur is the Shabbos, and Yom Kippur falls on on Shabbos. Do we mention Shabbos on Yom Kippur? We certainly do, right? When we have Yom yeah. Kippur, we don't just talk about Yom Kippur, we add Shabbos. On the spala, Nila, Sarach, Lahas, Yishal Shabbos. Now, Nila and Shabbos, is there any connection whatsoever to Nila and Shabbos? Nila is totally dependent yeah. on, on, on Yom, Kippur. Yom Kippur. But what do we add in? We add in a mention of Shabbos, right? So, Sarach, Lahas, Shabbos, Yom, Shuhun, Nishayev, why? Because since it's a day that has four tefillahs, right? It has four prayers on that day. So we add it in, right? To We add, we add it in. So to hear Hanukkah, we're going to add it in. To it's a, it's a day that requires four prayers, and it happens to be Hanukkah. We're going to add it in. The more it says, we're going to have a problem now. If that's the case, we're going to have a problem going forward in the following set of halachas. What's the problem? He said the Allah is like Yeshua ben Levi, but nonetheless, Rabbi, who said that we don't add it in, but Rabbi, Rabbi says we do add it in. What, what did Rabbi say? That Yanta Chalio is the Shabbos. When Yanta falls out on Shabbos, what do we say? So now we're talking again, it's a little bit obscure, but if you guys think just for a moment, after the davening on Friday night, we have a bracha of Magain Avois. Magain Avois, the Mama right? If you ever look at that, it's a mini Chazora of the whole davening. It's a Chazora of the whole davening. So in that Chazora, on Shabbos Yantif, if you pay attention, we don't make, we don't mention Yantif. We don't add Yantif into that Chazorah. But according to that, if we don't add Yantif into that Chazorah, we see that there's something that's unrelated to the day, like Yant, that that's um, not the reason for it coming. Right, that blessing is a Shabbos blessing, and we don't add Yantif. So here too, also, when Musaf comes on. Uh, on Hanukkah, we shouldn't add Alanisim. Shliach Sibor, Yorid Lesnea Teva, that means he goes down to the, to the place to Davin, to the Amud. Arvis, Eno Sarach Lahas, Nashal Yantif. When he says that, that Baruch of Megain Avois, he doesn't add in anything about Yantif. Shimali Shabbos, Ain Shliach Sibor, Yorid, Arvis, Arvis, excuse me. But if it wasn't for Yantif, for, for Shabbos, he wouldn't go. Right to say this this bracha, right, and so therefore Yantif isn't included. Zok de Gemara hechi chashta. How can you compare this case? This bracha that you're talking about chasam b'din hu dafid b'shabes nami l'sara. This bracha of magin avoys is a total extra. It's not a necessary thing to say. If you don't, if you miss, you don't repeat davening. But what happened? The rabbis added it in for Sakana. Now, right opposite this is a four or five line Rashi. And Rashi says, explains like this. The Rashi starts with Mishum Sakana. 
I'll suppose I'll go through it. Just translate. He said it like this. He said that he says that normally during the week, people in in the, in uh, agrarian setting would not come to shul, and they wouldn't come to shul. So Davin at home, but Friday night they would come to shul. But being working people, you know, they were getting their things done. And by the time they got to shul, usually it wasn't quite on time. They walked to shul. They didn't, weren't over on Shabbos. They didn't transgress the Shabbos, but they got there late. The problem was that if they got there late, right, going home on their own was a problem. Because the guys that got there on time, I guess the non-farmers, the people that were, that were studying <laughs> and, uh, and, and not working in the farm, so they were ready to go. They'd finished davening already. So the rabbi was remesakin, this brach of magin avois, for two purposes. One, that they should hear part of the review of the prayer, the people that came late. And number two, that everybody should finish at the same time. Because they finish at the same time, they go outside, they walk each other home, and there's no fear that anybody will come to, to uh, be robbed. Or, of course, in the times of the rabbis, they had the, they had the uh, mazikin, they had the shadim, these, uh, I don't know, I don't want to call them ghosts, but uh, they were, they're spiritual forces that were out to trip people up. And if you were alone, you were more vulnerable to them. So they created this prayer to stop the, to stop the Friday night davening. And as we all know, it's effective, right? We all know it does step out the Friday night comedy. But usually I get home and my, my, my wife isn't, uh, from now and especially in the, in the summer when we change the clock, my wife is still trying to uh, make all the last minute preparations. So I can stay longer in shul, no problem. But this was the reason it was put in place. So you're comparing something, a choiv, musaf is a choiv. We have to see musaf on, on, on Shabbos to something and there's something that's not a choy. This isn't really a choy. The rabbis added it in in order that people should be able to stay in the shul a little bit longer. So when they when they finish diving, it's all at the same time. And the fact that we don't mention yontif in it is irrelevant. It's not relevant. It's not relevant because this is just a special bracha. It's not like musaf, which is a, which chiyuv, is part of the fixed part of the prayer service. This is something that was just a- added. The Gemara says, Yom Shuhu Nishai Ba'arbet Filois. But, but Shabbos Hanukkah or, or, Yom, or, uh, or um, Yom Kippur, or as a day, we have, we have four fixed prayers. Really, I mean, Yom Kippur is, is five fixed prayers. So I have six fixed prayers. We have Nila, Shachris, um, Nila, Marv, Shach, well, no, it's the other way around, right? We have Marev, Shachris, Musaf, Mincha, and Nila. Five fixed prayers. Five fixed prayers on. But it means, it means it's a day of a certain number of fixed prayers. And whatever fixed prayers you have, the more is leaving off that we have to add in to the fixed prayers. We have to add in al So on Musaf, on Shabbos, we add in the prayer of al even though... On, 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 on Hanukkah itself, there's no Korban Musaf. The Mishnah said, we're going back to our mission, no Ba'ali. We're not allowed to have the, the tail fat, to use it as an as a oil for our, um, our Shabbos candle. The Chamim, Anatanikamim, the Chamim really are going on the next piece of the Mishnah. What was the next piece of the Mishnah? The next piece of the Mishnah was the Chalim and fat. We don't use fat as an oil, as a base for the for the um, Shabbos candles. But if you look, if you look in, the, in the Mishnah going on, it says, Tanakama, uh, Tanakama, the rabbi said, you can't lie with fat. And then we have a statement of Nachum um, Hamadi, uh, who says, you can't lie with, again, you can't lie with fat. So what's the difference between them? They both seem to be saying the same thing. A chum kind of Tanakama is saying the same thing. I'll tell you what's between them. Rav Bruno Amarav, Loma Simon. Rav Bruno Amarav said, What about the case where you want to add in a little bit of cooked fat, which we know burns well? Once the fat is cooked, it burns well, together with something like olive oil. 
you're adding a little bit, you add it in together to make a mixture that you could light the Shabbos candles, knowing both, that they both burn well. What's the din with Loma Simon? And Rashi says that we didn't really, we didn't really come to a conclusion. We didn't come to a conclusion over there. If it's a well burning, if the fat burns well, do we still say that we can't add it into something that, that burns, that, that, that we approved like olive oil and say that together it will make a good, a good fuel? Unclear. Okay, we're going through these. are all, all the Mishnahites we went Friday night between Mincha and uh, between Kabbalah Shabbos and Marev. So we have, we have, uh, we're going to have another, I don't know, there's like, what are there, seven, eight Mishnahites here. It'll probably take us uh, uh, a few weeks to finish the uh, Mama Likin, this, this pair. Here, here we go. In Malik and Mishemin, sorry for being So one of the Mishnahites says we're not allowed to light. With shemen that has to be burnt on burnt, uh, we to burn on yontif. It's not burnt on yontif. We're not allowed to use burnt, burnt, burning oil, oil that needs to be burnt on yontif. We'll see right away. Right? In other words, the din of this oil is it has to be burnt. Therefore, we can't use it on yontif. Now we're switching gears. We're talking. What can we burn on yontif? On Shabbos or yontif? Actually, on Shabbos. Maybe Shmuel Amar in Malikin the. A tear, you can't use a tear, and that's tar, right? Burns very smelly. They cover the Shabbos, not the covered Shabbos. Well, they can matter, but not, they're not matter tar, but they can in any type of oil. Oils are all good. If it's, if it's sesame oil, if it's nut oil, if it's if it's a rat, a, a, um, uh, mm-hmm. Radish oil, b'shemen dogim, fish oil, b'shemen pekuois. Pekuois seem to be some type of a desert gourd. They have a crazy name for it over there. Kokolins? 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 Yeah, pretty close. <laughs> I have no pretty idea close. what that. Any, anybody heard of such yeah. a thing? Do you want to look it up? But... The desert gourd? Wash. Some type of Wash. gourd. <clears throat> Peter Benef, in the leftovers of sap. I guess when you process sap, you get some type of leftover thing that's still that's still a combustible, right? And it's okay according to the rabbis for an oil for um Napsa. Yeah. What do they have? They have a special name for it there? Napsa. 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 Right. It's left left the rajah is left over from the tree. From the sap of the tree. If Tarfin Omar in Malik and Elish Shemin Zayat still valid. If Tarfin was very, was a, was a, a Balchumra. No, Shabbos, not on my Shabbos. On my Shabbos, we only use olive oil. Nothing else is good enough. And we're asked my time. My time of what? What's the reason of what? What's the reason we can't use oil that needs to be burnt on Yantif? Now remember, we're allowed to burn things on Yantif. It's not like Shabbos. We have a hatred to burn things on Yantif. So why is the reason? About to cook on yantif. Why can't we use to burn to burn oil? We know that the oil we said before is truma that became tame. The truma that became tame has a din and it has to be burned. The more answers of fishain, sorry, fin kachim, yantif. Because we don't burn kachim on yantif. Right? So let's see. Where do we know the source for that? We don't burn kachim on yantif. So Cheski, the rabbi said, they learned similarly in the yeshiva of Cheski, Omer Kral, the Pasuk says, don't leave over, that's just talking specifically about your Korban, it's the Korban Pesach, don't leave it over to the morning. And whatever, whatever, whatever you did leave over, right? You, you have, you, you'll see you have to burn. Shein tamalomer ad boikir. Why does it say boikir twice? Ad tamalomer ad boikir. It said, don't leave it over till the morning and don't leave over the extra till the morning. Why Why does it tell me the morning twice? Haksi litain boikir shein ilusreifa. To tell you, right, that you have a second morning to burn it. Rashi explains, what do you mean the second morning? So it's Pesach. I burn, a, I, I have the Corbin that we brought it. It's burning overnight, and now it's left over. So what do I say? Don't burn it now, because what's today? Today is Yantif. So I don't burn the leftover Kachim on Yantif. I wait a day until Chalamoid, and I burn it Chalamoid. 
I have an extra day. That's the second boat care. Not this boat, not this morning. The plastic says, but wait, to, wait till boat care. The next morning, you have an extra morning. Don't burn it on yante. So there's our raya that we don't burn kachim on yante. We don't burn kachim on yante. We wait an extra day till it's not yante. By Omar, no, the different, a different proof. Omar, on Shabbos, we bring the Shabbos offering. But, but this, right, which is Truma that became Tame, right, I don't bring Truma that became Tame on, on Shabbos. But similarly, this is Truma that became Tame. I don't bring it on Yantiv either, right? It's not appropriate to burn something that really has no longer a connection to the, the holiness of the day, like Truma Tamea on Shabbos and Yantiv. Rav Omar Krohu. Rav says, I'll give you a different reason. It says by Yantif that I'm allowed to do I'm allowed to do things that relate to the Yantif itself. I'm allowed to cook the food that I need. I'm, al- I'm allowed to, to add to the fire that I need, right? But I'm, I can't start a fire, but I can add wood to the fire because I need the fire. The only things that I need. So here, only this, these things that you need, right? We call Eichel Nefesh, the things you need for yourself, but nothing, nothing that is unrelated to the, the actual cooking of the things that you need. Right? O- only the things that you need for Yantif. Again, we're trying to burn truma, right, that, we, uh, that has a din of Sreifta. I don't need that for Yantif. It's extra. One of the examples that the, the Rashi gives is, for example, sharpening a knife. If I forgot to sharpen a knife for, for Yantif, I can't do it on Yantif. Right? I should have sharpened it before Yantif. That's the actual food I can cook. The actual food I can I can prepare. But to prepare to prepare the food, like for example, sharpening the knife, I'm not allowed to do. Similarly, the 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 truma that became tame, I can't burn it. Levada, lo mila, shlo Only these things. And for example, right, I can't do bris mila, shlo uh, even though it's uh, mitzvah to do bris mila, but I'm only allowed to do bris mila if the eighth day falls on Shabbos or Yantif. And even though I have a kalvachomer, I have a kalvachomer that I should be able to do mila on Shabbos. Are you guys ready for a kalvachomer? This is one of the trickiest ones I've seen in a long time. Here goes the kalvachomer. What's the kalvachomer that I should be able to do bris mila on Shabbos again? Not on the right day. Yeah. Bris mila on the right day, it's very clear. On the eighth day, I, I do bris mila. But what about doing bris mila on the ninth day? He forgot. But the ninth day is yantif, or the ninth day is Shabbos. Can I do bris mila on the ninth day? So the Gemara says a kavachomer. You can, you should be able to do it. What's the kavachomer? It goes like this: Sras, right? If a person is a leper, right, he's not allowed to do, right. The avoided the base of Migdash. A leper is, is, is put outside the community until he's better. He's a Kayin, but he can't come into the base of Migdash. He can't cut off his leprosy and do the avoida. But we you know that avoida itself, the avoida itself, you're allowed to do on Shabbos, right? The avoida is the Shabbos. You're allowed to bring Korbanas on Shabbos. The avoida itself is the Shabbos. Now, we said that Mila, we know for sure, is also Deich Shabbos, right? In the right day. Mila is Deich in the right day. And, and, and therefore, and, 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 and what else? And we know that Mila is Deich Tzaras, right? If a person, this is very interesting, halacha, but if a baby has Tzaras on the, on the place, the Makam and Mila, right? So we cut off the Tzaras, even though, right, it's an issue to cut off Sras, but the Mila is stronger than Sras. The Mila is stronger than Sras. The, the, lep, the leper's Mila, I mean, how a baby got Mila on the Makam Mila, I guess that, that has to be his parents' fault because the baby can't have done anything wrong to deserve to get Mila, uh, to get uh, leprosy on, that part of, on any part of his body. But he has it. So he comes to, the, to do his mila on the, on the eighth day. We cut it off, even though there's an issue to cut off the tzaras from your body. You're not allowed to cut off the leprosy from your body, but the bris mila takes precedence over the tzaras. You're allowed to cut it off. 
So if Mila takes precedence over over Sras, right? And Sras, who said, is not doich the avoda, but Mila is doich Shabbos, then certainly Mila should be doich Shabbos if Filish Lobes Manoi, even not on the day that you have the you have the actual Mila, because Mila is the strongest of them all. That's the idea of the Kabbalah Chomer. Uh, Yaakov, is, is this uh, in English, fortiori? Is this what you're referring to? This That's what Kabbalah Chomer means. A, a, where, where did, where did, where did this word it? come from, though? It sounds Italian, this fortiori. I think it's, I think it's, um, it's not, it's uh, Latin. Latin. Okay, well, that's Italian. Yeah. <laughs> Close. It, it means Kalva Homer. Okay. okay. A for the only reason. This is a tricky one. I I, uh, I had to think, I had to I actually we spoke about it at the dining room table last night with my son and son in laws to try and help me in my own mind <laughs> figure it out because I couldn't figure it out. Anyways, Baruch Hashem, that's the logic, but we, we don't accept that logic. And the Gemara is going to give you a reason why we don't st- accept it, because we have another principle. Even though by, by Kavla Homer, we should, by this a priori logic, we should be able to do bris mila not on, on the day that it actually falls out, even if it's the other day, because Shabbos, the mila is stronger than Shabbos and Saras. It says like this, it says Shabbos sign. You know that Shabbos is a mitzvah assay. And Yantif, right? Yantif is an assay and a los assay. Where you're supposed to observe the Yantif, you're not supposed to profane it. Where it ain't assay, but there's only one mitzvah to do to do Mila. Mitzvah is an ase, and, 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 and what do we say? The ain ase, doich es ase, ve lois ase. One ase is doich one los ase, but one ase, one positive commandment is not, doesn't push off a, 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 a positive and a negative commandment. So beyond the hood, the dami. Now, so we're coming back and we're saying, fine, so you told me, on I'm not allowed to burn but I'm allowed to burn it during the week? My time, what's the reason? Just like you have a mitzvah to burn kachim, that became tamei, so do I have to burn tumah that became tamei? And the Pasuk says like this, Meshavis, Right? It should be the time for to burn it from me. So hey, can I'm so when when is that time? Where's the proof for that? It says like this. I've given you my my truma to guard over. Now, if you look at truma there, the word is trumasi, my trumas. So we're going to distinguish. There's kachim, right, which you, which you have a mitzvah to burn, but not get a benefit from. Right, chuma tahara, you do not burn, you don't get a benefit. That you would burn and not to get a benefit. And the Torah is saying to you, the chuma tamea, you can get a benefit, you can burn it during the week. But but, but Kudshim, that became Tame, you have to just burn it and you don't get a benefit. Okay, because I thought we'd stop here. I mean, I know that we have um, we have to try and we're picking up a little pace, but I think that the, the, the doc is a little bit shorter. And um, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but how's everybody doing? Otherwise, good? Thank good, God. yes. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. So Thank I, God. I, I asked. I asked the question. I don't know if anybody's interested, but uh, you know, there's a famous story of of uh, Alexandria and Mitzrayim. The shul in Alexandria was so big they couldn't hear. Last year, used to put in the shul in Alexandria in Egypt. It was so big 
that they had flags mm -hmm. to delineate when the, the prayers were happening. So people could answer, Amen, Yeheshme Rabba, but they didn't hear it. They couldn't hear it because it was too big. So they put up the flags, and the green flag meant Yeheshme Rabba, the white flag meant Amen, uh, the, they, had a, they had a yellow, they were saying Kaddish, and so on and so forth. So I, I asked a shout out to a, a Paisik yesterday, and he told me, if I make brachas, so over the telephone, you can say Amen. If you want, I'm going to say the morning brachas. If you want to say Amen, you know, we have a special minute to, uh, to stay 100 brachas a day. It's very hard when you're not davening together to get 100 brachas a day in. So I thought if I say the morning brachas, Everybody says Amen. So you're going to get an extra, I don't know, 19, 20 brachas. And hopefully during the course of the day, get to 100. The reason for saying 100 brachas a day comes from David HaMelech, because there was a plague in the times of King David, and 100 people were dying every day. And King David instituted that in order that people should stop dying, we should start saying 100 blessings a day, because 100 blessings a day, if a person is saying 100 blessings a day, they connect to Hashem. So they're throughout the course of the day, and they never lose their connection. The problem was people were self-centered. So saying 100 brachas a day is a sign of connecting to Hashem.